Hi, thanks for tuning in to the first episode of Eating Cereal. And for the first episode, I'm going to eat actual cereal. Now, what is this series? What is Eating Cereal? I'm going to explain that on the other side of the screen in just a minute. So sit back and enjoy the ride. This is Eating Cereal. So in this first episode, I'm going to be eating Chip Mates, which are sort of the Kroger knockoff of Cookie Crisp, and a gallon of milk as well. And I should probably throw in this banana because it's going to go bad if I don't eat it. I'm going to eat everything out of this giant bowl. And I got this bowl at a food challenge in San Francisco at Pho Garden. I ate, this bowl was filled with pho, and I ate it. That was in 2013. So, let's get it going. to start. Now this totals about 10 pounds, um, but eight of it is liquid because of the milk, so um, it's not as difficult as your typical 10 pound challenge, but it is quite a lot. So I'm a little nervous, but uh, I'll give it my best. So I'm going to start the timer. All right, let's make it hot. So first, what is eating cereal? Let's start by talking about the title, Eating Cereal. As you can maybe see from the opening music and logo, it's a spin-off of the NPR podcast, Cereal. And if you haven't heard any of the Cereal podcasts, I recommend you check it out. Um, it's on season two right now, which is about Bo Bergdahl. And I'm a really big fan of Cereal, and I was sort of inspired to make something educational in the spirit of NPR. And in the same way as Serial, I'll try to end episodes with sort of a cliffhanger, like, but then there's the Nisha call next time on Eating Serial. So something like that. And um, on one half of the screen, I'll be doing the eating. And on the other half of the screen, I'll be giving a scientific lesson of some kind to go along with the eating to sort of stimulate the other half of your brain. And I'll try to have the food on the left side have some connection to the thing I'm lecturing about. But... That won't always be the case, but one example of that will be a few episodes from now when I plan to do a food challenge at a casino and give a lecture on a card counting trick and sort of relate that to the brain's potential. So each episode should be about eight to 10 minutes. This one might be a little bit longer because I've got all these explanatory notes, but in general, I'll be shooting for that target. So let's get into our first lesson. Today's lesson is about the calculus of weight loss. So you may be wondering, what exactly does that mean, the calculus of weight loss? It's the concept that body weight is not an algebraic equation, but it is a differential equation. And if you're unfamiliar with differential equations, don't worry, I will tell you everything you need to know for this lesson. And let's start with a hypothetical case. Let's say Bill is a grown man He's 5 feet 8 inches tall and he weighs 150 pounds. So this is a healthy weight for him to stay at. And in order to maintain his body weight, he needs to burn the same amount of calories that his body absorbs from the food he eats. So he consistently eats 2,000 calories a day and runs 3 miles. And he's able to maintain his body weight of 150 pounds. So let me pause for a moment by saying that I'm going to be putting all the exercise into terms of miles run per day. Obviously, there's a lot of great ways to get exercise, uh, biking, lifting weights. Lifting weights is even better because you are building muscle while burning fat. But just for simplicity, I'll be talking about things in terms of miles run. So Bill's been maintaining this routine for years, and he's always been at this weight. Now let's say that Bill starts eating a couple extra donuts each morning, and he's now eating 2,500 calories a day. Now, this is going to cause him to gain weight, right? But how much weight are we talking about here? 
So I'm going to give you a multiple choice question here. If he continues to eat 2,500 calories while only running three miles, is he going to A, gain weight forever until he's the size of a house and bigger, or B, will he settle at a new equilibrium? And if so, what will his new weight be? Now, if body weight were a purely algebraic equation, the answer would be A, with everything being an independent factor. But like I said earlier, body weight is a differential equation. So uh, the answer is B. And let's get right into the lesson with what is a differential equation. And at the end of this, we're going to be able to calculate what exactly Bill is going to weigh when he reaches his new equilibrium. Now, your body weight, W, is an incredibly complex equation. It is a function of the amount of food you eat, the amount of exercise you get, your age, your level of stress, and your body chemistry, which includes medical conditions, enzyme productions, which in and of themselves are extremely complex equations, as they're dependent on family history, environment, and other factors. But for the purposes of this presentation, we are only going to focus on the things you have direct control of, which are calories eaten and amount of exercise you get. So now, let's deconstruct this function into its differential equation. Now, if you want a little more info on differential equations, the Wikipedia article on them is very good. But for the purposes of this presentation, we are only going to consider differential equations by their simplest definition, which is an equation whose rate of change is dependent on the equation value itself. Now, let's put that into mathematical terms. And before I go into this, the concepts are all probably pretty intuitive. I'm just putting it into a more fundamental mathematical terms. So here is the differential equation that describes body weight in terms of exercise and calories eaten. So dw dt is the rate of change of your body weight over time. And we have three conditions to consider here. C is greater than xw. In that case, dw dt is positive and we have weight gain. If C is equal to x times w, we have dw dt equals zero and weight stays constant. C is less than xw, we have dw dt being negative, and that is weight loss. And here's the solution to the differential equation. And um, if you don't understand this integration, that's okay. It's just in case you're interested in knowing how the equation works out, I'm going to show you right here. But this is one of those integrals that turns out to be a natural log solution. So we have our solution down at the bottom here. And uh, we work it out further, we get w equals negative ke to the negative xt plus c all over x. In this case, k is just a universal constant. So it's not, it's not dependent on anything, it's just a constant. So to use an analogy, your body weight is like the temperature of a room, and the healthfulness of the way you live is like the thermostat setting. If you weigh 200 pounds and you eat and exercise like someone who weighs 150 pounds, you will lose weight initially quite fast until you approach this 150 pound barrier at which point your weight loss will slow down and level off. Just like a thermostat tells the heater to really crank up the heat if the set point is really far off from the actual temperature and then it sort of slows down as you approach the right temperature. Conversely, if you get to 150 pounds and you go back to eating like you did when you weighed 200 pounds, you'll go back to 200 initially quickly and then you will level off. So now let's solve for Bill's final weight. Uh, and the trick of this is we don't even need to use that solved equation. We can use the original differential equation since we know that his weight is in equilibrium with respect to time. It's not changing over time. We can say that this dw dt is equal to zero. So we take the initial condition when he weighed 150 to solve for his x, his exercise factor, and we get 2,000 minus x times 150 equals 0. 2,000 equals 150 times x. x is equal to 13.33. And now we use this x factor and apply it to our new condition. dw2 dt uh, is now at equilibrium. It's at 0. And it's equal to c2 minus x times w2. c2 is now 2,500 calories, and then W2 is what we're solving for. We get 2,500 equals our X factor times W, 13.3 times W. W2 equals 187.5 pounds. So he gained 37.5 pounds by adding 500 calories to his daily intake. 
And uh, one observation you can make from this is that W2 over W1 is equal to C2 over C1. When he didn't change his exercise habits, his weight changed proportionally with the number of calories he ate. Now, it's tempting to try to apply this rule across the board and say, well, if he doubles his calorie intake, then he'll double his weight. So if he went to 4,000 calories, he would go up to 300 pounds. But it's a little more complex than that because this X factor, even if, um, even if he's not changing his exercise habits, the X factor is going to increase with increased body weight regardless because uh, just a larger person just needs more calories uh, for his or her body to function. So it's tempting to try to apply this across the board, but it's, it's more of an, the rule is easier to apply just for shorter bursts of weight loss and weight gain. And it's just a nice little guide to, uh, to nice little proportion to keep in, in your hat when you're thinking about weight loss or weight gain. But uh, anyway, that is it for this first lesson. And I hope you enjoy it. Ugh, man. I'm really regretting adding that banana now. <sighs> All right, almost done. Ah. Done. <sighs> All right. 30 minutes, 30 and a half, 30 minutes and 40 seconds. That was a lot of cereal. Yeah, that's a lot harder than just the gallon of milk. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. Well, that's it for episode one of Eating Cereal. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope you learned something. Uh, if Feel free to debate any of the points I made in the, uh, in the mathematical portion and, um, and yeah, please give me any feedback. So thank you and see you next time on episode two. This is eating cereal.